What happens when you supercharge a turkey burner and set four electric vehicles on fire? That's exactly what the Fire Safety Research Institute did. I'm fortunate to be one of 17 technical panel members involved in this project, and we're right in the middle of a three-year study designed to look at the hazards of electric vehicle fires. But not just the hazards, we also want to understand how to put these fires out. By studying everything from the toxic smoke exposure to effectiveness of firefighting techniques, we're building a comprehensive understanding of how these fires behave and the risks they pose. In the very first experiment back in 2023, we focused on gathering baseline data by burning an ICE vehicle, internal combustion engine vehicle. This most recent experiment started the same way, by burning two additional ICE vehicles. Before this study, there was little research done on vehicle fires. We weren't really worried about them. But these experiments, they set the stage for meaningful comparisons with electric vehicles, which are becoming more common on our roads, especially in urban areas. This research is looking at suppression tactics, gear contamination, and long-term health effects for firefighters. To really understand the hazards and behaviors of vehicle fires, every detail needs to be planned out. Six vehicles were selected for this phase, two internal combustion engine vehicles for additional baseline data, and four electric vehicles to study the challenges around the extinguishment. Each vehicle was set up in the large-scale fire lab to ensure a controlled environment with consistent instrumentation. The ignition method was surprisingly simple, yet highly effective. A single burner meant for a turkey fryer. But this wasn't your average turkey fryer. It was supercharged with a fuel air mixture dialed in specifically to provide the intense heat necessary to drive that battery into thermal runaway, which is a challenge. It's surprisingly difficult to drive these batteries into thermal runaway from an external heat source. Every vehicle was instrumented with a comprehensive array of sensors. These included thermocouples inside the battery, in the cabin, and on the exterior of the vehicle to measure temperature changes throughout the experiment. Air sample pumps were placed around the vehicle to capture gases released during the burn, and particulate matter was collected to study both short and long-term health effects. Turnout gear samples were strategically placed around the vehicle to measure contamination levels. This not only helps us understand the risks of firefighters during these incidents, but it also tests the effectiveness of cleaning methods after our exposure. Even the water used in suppression efforts was carefully monitored. A pan beneath the vehicle, it captured runoff, which was drained through this long pipe for sampling to assess the environmental impacts of firefighting efforts. To capture every detail, cameras, thermal imaging, and an array of advanced sensors recorded the behavior of the fire and the effectiveness of those suppression tactics. This setup ensured that no data point was missed, no matter how small it was. All this prep work wasn't just for show. It's the level of detail needed to gather meaningful data that can inform real-world firefighting tactics. The experiments then followed a detailed procedure designed to simulate real-world firefighting conditions as closely as possible. First, the turkey burner was positioned under the battery to apply intense heat. This is where the waiting game begins. Every single vehicle behaves a little differently, and like I mentioned earlier, it can be a challenge to get those batteries into thermal runaway. Once that happens though, the turkey burner, it was turned off to allow the batteries to do their thing. Four, three, two, one, turn off. Fire crews stood by for six minutes to simulate the average response time of a fire department. During this period, the fire was allowed to develop unchecked, creating conditions firefighters would often encounter upon arrival. After six minutes, suppression efforts begin. Go ahead, after, let's use that full minute for getting houses ready. After you slow that for a little bit, you take a knee and anchor. For 10 minutes, water was applied using standard firefighting techniques. However, as we know, extinguishing a battery fire, it's not an easy task. After 10 minutes, the vehicle was lifted to a 30 degree angle using pre-rigged chains. This allowed crews to target the underside of the vehicle and directly cool the battery housing. Throughout the procedure, an immense amount of data was captured. Take a look at the firefighters. Even they had instrumentation. There were turnout gear swatches taped to their gear. Notice the tin foil on the hose going over his shoulder. That goes to an air pump to allow gas sampling right at the firefighter level. Every action was carefully monitored, ensuring a comprehensive understanding of every detail. This systematic approach is what makes these experiments so valuable. It's more than just lighting a vehicle on fire. To get a better sense of the early findings from these experiments, I spoke with Adam Barrowy. Two very, very different experiments where uh, one of the vehicles we tested first 
We made an initial attack just as you would an internal combustion engine car, knocked the fire out, and actually nothing came back. The disassembly we're doing showed that looks like some of the cells may have gone into thermal runaway. But we didn't get complete propagation. So it's very interesting that it took very little water, you know, maybe three, 400 gallons. Whereas yesterday's experiment, once we got thermal runaway in the battery pack, it was very, very difficult to put that fire out. Although some of the things I think that we've learned about construction may have helped us. You know, we were, we were probably close to the battery burning out, but getting a little water up under the rear seat where there was a hole in the battery, looks like it may, it may have helped us um, knock that fire out. As Adam mentioned, after these vehicles burn, there's even more work to be done. Each vehicle is placed on a lift and the batteries were carefully disassembled to reveal exactly what happened during the fire. This is not an easy task. Due to the fire damage, you have no idea what you're going to find. This teardown process is essential for answering some key questions like, was the battery even in thermal runaway? While it was on fire, did the crews manage to stop the cascading thermal runaway effect? Did the fire just simply burn through all the available material? What role did the battery's construction play in how it burned and responded to water? Working alongside the team from Monroe & Associates, I got to assist with this difficult process. Each battery pack was a little different due to the differences in cell type and overall pack construction. These differences mattered, not only in how the fire spread, but also in how crews could access and cool the battery during suppression efforts. This hands-on analysis is critical for connecting the dots between what we see during the burns and what's actually happening inside that battery. Al Steyer from Monroe & Associates is no stranger to vehicle teardowns. Typically, his team disassembles new, unburned vehicles to analyze their construction. But working with fire-damaged vehicles presents an entirely different challenge. Let's hear from Al as he walks us through what it's like to dig into a vehicle that's been through a controlled burn. This is a battery housing that came out of it. As you can see, it's pretty toasty. There's not a live cell in it. And we're just trying to dig through all the uh, plastic, melted plastic, to find the fastener so we can pull the cells out of it, pull the modules out. How's this compared to the normal vehicles you tear down? Uh, nothing like it. <laughs> they, uh, they're nice and clean. You can see the fasteners. You can figure out where everything is connected. And yeah, this thing is just, as you can see, you know, bus bars are all melted to different things. And it's you know, like this one here. We have one bus bar that was actually welded to uh, the top frame, wherever that's at. But yeah, this thing got really hot. Kind of exciting. I find these experiments fascinating. In my opinion, as a single technical panel member on the project, there are a lot of differences between each vehicle fired during the experiments. For instance, one of the vehicle's high voltage batteries burned aggressively, yet there's surprisingly little fire in the cabin. Even more interesting, after the fire was fully extinguished, the infotainment screen was still functioning. Another vehicle appeared to exhibit prolonged off-gassing after the fire appeared to be extinguished. It actually appeared to have a reignition about 30 minutes after the fire seemed to be out. Crews had to apply additional water to that battery box as temperatures began to rise rapidly. One vehicle even reignited multiple times hours after the fire seemed to be extinguished. This kind of delayed thermal runaway is something many fire departments see at actual incidents. The fire behavior itself was also interesting. It often resembled a gas pool fire, where the flames seemed to move from one side of the vehicle to the other side of the vehicle as crews applied water. This fire behavior made suppression efforts feel more like redirecting flames than actually extinguishing them. These observations highlight just how unpredictable and varied EV fires can be. It's why this study is so important in helping us understand these incidents and refine our firefighting strategies. So what are the next steps? So next steps after this set of experiments, we wanna go back, uh, take our initial experiments, doing kind of these baselines, looking at how things behave in free burn versus how effective we were in suppression, get that all wrapped up into a report and start developing our tactical considerations with our technical panel. We'll be looking to get that sort of uh, completed before April when we come back here. Yep, again, we'll be burning four more cars. So we have enough data to draw some statistical conclusions on occupational exposure measurements we're doing. This research is crucial, not just for firefighters, but for the safety of everyone as EVs become more prevalent on our roads. Each experiment, each observation, and each piece of data brings us closer to understanding how to manage these incidents effectively. If you have any thoughts or questions, drop them in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. 
And if you want to catch up on the earlier phases of this study, visit the project page at fsri.org or check out my previous videos linked in the description.